It's been weeks since flames raced through the hilly paddocks of Bridgetown, three hours south of Perth. They left behind a scarred landscape. But a resilient community, with the help of the volunteer group Blaze Aid, have started a mammoth repair job. We're going to tension it from here? You're going to strain it from... No, no, we'll just strain it in the middle here, I think. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. The fire broke out just after one o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. Its ferocity is stunning even seasoned firefighters. Jesus. Ken Armstrong tried to call his son-in-law to raise the alarm, but couldn't get through. You there, Ben? Dad had been trying to ring my husband to say that there was a fire yeah. near the lease property where we run our cattle, and there was no missed calls, no messages, nothing on his phone. It was like no one had tried to call him at all. The blaze started when this tree fell on a power line, and Telstra has confirmed subsequent power outages affected mobile services. Having mobile phone signal would have been a lot better, especially for the boys that were out fighting at the time. This is Bridgetown's phone tower. If a fire causes a blackout, it has battery backup designed to last between three and five hours. Once that battery backup um, had expired, then we couldn't actually get our people in there to take in more fuel to get the generators working again. According to the recently released Regional Telecommunications Review, it's a familiar story and happened during the Black Summer fires. Some regional communities think Telstra should install solar backup to prevent it happening again. We don't want the towers to go down at all. That's a fundamental concern for us. So we look at all types of technology and as they improve over time, um, we'll put those in place. Australia's telecommunications sector was deregulated in the 1990s. As part of the deal, Telstra is obligated to provide a phone service to everyone in the country, regardless of where they live. But that arrangement is now in the spotlight. There are no other companies that can match the service that they do provide. And on a good day, that's very good. Um, the problem is that not every day is a good day. The regional communications minister agrees. That is what has to happen. We know it's not working for everyone. We know Telstra in particular gets a lot of money uh, from the taxpayer uh, to actually ensure that every Australian has that voice service. Unfortunately, we know the copper lines are degrading in specific areas and that some Australians are going months without a voice service and it's not good enough. Telstra says it's complying with its obligations but agrees the agreement needs reviewing. The obligation on us is to use our copper network to provide that service. That copper network is a very old network. It's costly to run. It's becoming less and less reliable. And so the longer we use that, there will be more outages in that network. So we would like to see that the USO obligation be reformed in a way that allows us to use different technologies, better technologies, um, that provide a better service to customers and meet their needs. In Kendanup, four hours south of Perth, farmer Andrew Slade prizes connectivity. Yeah, hello. Yeah, how are you getting on? Yeah, how you going, Trying to do a couple of washouts just to my left and didn't really... Trying to get better coverage, he spent $20,000 installing private phone towers in conjunction with a local grower group and the telecommunications provider Pivotal, who've tipped in thousands more. Well, there's a lot of areas through here where there's no Telstra coverage at all, so I'd say over 80% of our farm doesn't get good, reliable coverage, so you're unable to make phone calls. And probably the big, the big one is not having um, decent connectivity at the home office, so at the farm office. Um, you know, we were reliant on satellite connection, which was quite poor and high latency, and we weren't getting you know, a, a reliable enough connection to run our office efficiently. Already, he believes it's money well spent. Yeah, so this is a spot on the farm where we have absolutely no Telstra coverage at all. Now running with the, the Pivotal network, you can see we're getting, yeah, sort of upwards of 30 megabits per second download speeds. In 2018, Andrew travelled the world as a Nuffield scholar researching agricultural technology. He says the improved connectivity is helping him unlock its potential. Tank sensors and weather stations, 
being able to you know, reduce your labour input by you know, having more remote sort of monitoring and then beyond that looking what we can do in terms of um, you know, being able to make better decisions from the information we're collecting. In the Wheatbelt town of Training, three hours northeast of Perth, Tereta Nichols wanted better internet to stream more Netflix. And she's been doing that since receiving her Starlink satellite dish from entrepreneur Elon Musk's company, SpaceX. Speeds are varying anywhere from 150 up to 300 megabits per second for downloading and getting uploading speeds anywhere from 25 to 50 megabits. That speeds that have never been experienced out in the wheat belt and the first time we've ever been able to enjoy um, 4K, for example, um, and video streaming and multiple devices connected at any time uh, without someone complaining who's hogging all the data. Tereta has now stopped using her NBN Skymaster dish, which provided much lower speeds. But she warns Starlink's customer service officers are offshore, the equipment isn't as robust and it costs more. You were looking at $848 all up, and then on top of that, it's $139 a month, but that is unlimited. For NBM, we we're paying around the $90 a month, um, and that was receiving about 200 gigabytes, and with most of that available between 1 and 7 a.m. So being able to make sure everything uploaded, um, like your computer updates, had to run in that time, you ran out of data you had no internet, it slowed down to 256 kilobits per second, which was barely usable. We're aware to the feedback. We, we know that we uh, uh, need to find more ways to um, increase data allowances and we'll continue to work with our stakeholders to develop those products. For people who aren't interested in streaming large amounts of video, regional internet advocates say the NBN's premium satellite service, SkyMaster Plus, is worth considering. My business needs, uh, all of my computer needs, my software needs, um, you know, any downloads or updates to, um, to, to productivity programs uh, is included in the Plus package. But Telstra doesn't sell the NBN's SkyMaster product. Because we haven't seen that it's delivered the quality that people have expected from that service and paid for the service and we end up having to then deal with the complaints and the issues associated with the service. Run a business, we need, we need that connectivity. So. If all of this sounds confusing, don't worry, you're not alone. I'm trying to ring somebody, give us a hand down here. The Regional Telecommunications Review found regional customers aren't always made aware of the best technology for their area and their needs, which could be satellite, fixed line or wireless services. We think it's very important that customers have access to all the information and there are impartial sources such as the Regional Tech Hub where uh, your viewers can uh, uh, get in touch and um, uh, understand all of the options that are available for them. Telstra recently announced plans to compete with Elon Musk's Starlink satellite service and the NBN hasn't ruled out adopting similar technology. Competition may bring down prices and improve service, but for now, poor communications remain a fact of life in many parts of rural Australia.